Welcome to Family Gamer TV. Now, over Christmas, my kids have slightly fallen in love with the Onky Drive um, game, video game, toy, where you've got these toy cars that drive around the track on their own, but then they can be upgraded, they steer themselves, but you can change lanes. And I'm excited today because we got Joby Otero, Chief Creative Officer from Onky, with us to tell us more about the game. So how did this all get started, Joby? It started with the three founders um, who are uh, PhDs in robotics and machine learning and AI from uh, Carnegie Mellon University. They looked at the different kinds of toys that they could uh, bring robotics to and it became pretty clear pretty early on that doing something with cars could be a great first evolution um, of bringing uh, robotics and toys and video games together. Um, and so it really evolved until uh, around, I think, uh, October uh, of 2013 is uh, when the first version of Anki Drive released. And it was announced, uh, I think, a little bit ahead of that uh, by Tim Cook. Um, on the Apple stage at the WWDC conference. Which is a nice, uh, nice audience to state your, set out your stall in front of there. Big time, yeah. yeah. So Boris Softman, our CEO, was up on stage and gave a great presentation of it. Uh, middle of last year, we released um, race mode into it, which has actually become even more popular than the original battle mode. Mm. Um, yeah, mode over Christmas, that's, that's the mode that I think we focused on. We have played some battle mode but it's that racing and the head-to-head -head sort of the challenge of it that my boys in particular, as you can see, uh, you know, really love. Yeah, and uh, it's just a great um, example of how we can continually evolve it over time. Um, but then in uh, uh, November of last year, we released probably our biggest update um, so far, which really brought a lot of personality um, to the experience through what we call these commanders. So we added these 10 sort of virtual human opponents. Um, so I think that that's brought the experience a lot more to life than it was before, and we plan to keep going in that direction. The phrase you've used there, you know, brings the experience to life, rings bells in my head, and probably in yours, I imagine, as well, that, that toys to life genre, the Activision um, sort of coined with Skylanders, and I understand that that was your background, was, was a part of the Skylanders launch, is that right? Yeah, that's right. For three and a half years, um, I worked on Skylanders as sort of a uh, bit of a creative glue across the brand. You know, my job was largely to uh, try to do the Vulcan mind meld with the creative heads at the different studios, and, um, beginning with uh, Paul Ritchie up at Toys for Bob, who I know you've talked with a lot. Yep, kind um, of old and, friends now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, that's been fantastic to, to watch um, from the, the toy production to uh, new games that we were thinking of um, and making sure that we were pushing it all as far as possible. Um, uh, flying out to China and helping to review the actual production of the toys uh, on the assembly line and um, you know, working with the team on the portal designs and all that sort of thing. Um, but deep down, I always wanted to do something even further on the hardware side of things. And so uh, um, after pretty much helping to solidify uh, what became Swap Force. I like that idea that once you've got an, an innovation like Skylanders, where in that case it brings toys to life in a video game, is there a way to do the opposite, where you can bring toys to life in the real world? Um, and you know, clearly you need some pretty heavy duty robotics and AI to be able to do that. Uh, and you know, luckily the, the guys at Anki had already been doing that. Um, and they were realizing that they wanted to expand the game side of the experience much more. Um, it's been a really great marriage of different kinds of background, and I think we're all learning a lot from each other. The technology involved here does mean that those cars are more expensive than, say, the more simplistic Skylanders or Disney Infinity figure. And it seems to take you maybe into a different audience. And does it take you away from the sort of collectible toy line? How do you see it? On the one hand, um, we definitely see the cars as being collectible, but on the other hand, you're right, the technology in them is um, it's very advanced, uh, and that comes with a cost. And so, it, like uh, you're saying, each car costs $50 each, whereas a Skylander um, is in the $10 to $15 range. Players have to think more carefully about, and they probably aren't going to be adding cars to their collection at quite the pace that they add Skylanders to their collection. And we don't have as many cars out there as there are characters in the Skylander world or in something like Disney Infinity. So yeah, um, those, those toy lines go on forever. <laughs> right. If you start collecting them, that's a, a black hole. 
Yeah, you know, and the truth is we do want to keep releasing new cars uh, throughout the year. We're constantly designing new ones. Has there been a challenge there to make sure that complexity is also reliable in that Anki drive? We're very pleasantly um, surprised at how robust um, the experience was, keeping up with the challenge of, of making sure that uh, people understand which mobile devices you can play Anki Drive on and making sure that uh, when they do download it, that it's a completely robust experience. Yeah, that has definitely been um, challenging. And, you know, we're, our teams uh, worked all throughout the holidays trying to respond um, to any issues that were coming up with that. But it's actually been really strong. So you have the weapons and you have the battle mode and you've introduced um, the racing and we've sort of new moves around that. And most recently, these characters. So is there, like, what's ahead? I can't wait to hear more. Are you able to say anything? Well, I can tell you that it's definitely going to continue get becoming a bigger experience. I think uh, we are looking at how can we take some of these characters and combine them into groups um, and add something to the play experience that way. Uh, there's also, you know, continuing innovations on the hardware side. So we talked about the cars, but how about the track itself? Yeah, so the options. track is a, a really interesting beast. Uh, you know, there's nothing else out there in car toys um, that works like it. You know, it's a, as you've seen, it's a, a rollout mat it's that's around three and a half feet wide by about eight okay. plus feet long. Um, and it's super quick to roll out and people really like how easy it is to set up. Um, and the, the track that comes with the starter kit, we just call it the starter track. Um, and it's actually a, a great overall track for both race and battle. Uh, gives people lots of space to maneuver. Um, it's really good for long distance weapon use as well because it's got those long straightaways. But there are two other tracks. There's a crossroads and bottleneck. And both of them have differences that they bring to the gameplay. So bottleneck has um, some really sharp turns in it, which um, really changes the game strategically, particularly for players who focused on upgrading the speed of their cars. Uh, because going around those really sharp turns, you definitely have to learn to uh, manipulate the throttle a bit more, um, and it creates a little bit more strategy around um, your targeting because there's fewer straightaways in there, so you have to be a bit more specific about where in the track you would use certain weapons. Um, Bottleneck also has a couple of pinch points on it um, where only about two cars at a time can squeeze through, and those pinch points coincide with a couple of specially marked zones where if you drive too close to those, the cars will slow down. So that's the, the uh, bottleneck track. And then the crossroads track um, has uh, some sharper turns as well. But what it really brings to the table is an intersection point where we get a lot more potential for collision. Um, and it's been fantastic that uh, we've never seen a car uh, come out of that you know, uh, damaged at all. Yeah, the car say, they really up that, that task, are they? Yeah, very much so. And I imagine you've probably got new tracks in the works, whether or not you can talk about them today. <laughs> yeah, I, I can say we're, we're definitely looking at not just cars to innovate on, but um, also our approach to tracks. That's about all I can say about that. Uh, and so our feeling is that we want to perfect the model first um, and then worry about broadening it with, with um, other brands potentially. What's the atmosphere like there at the moment? It must be quite exciting. Where are you based? What's the office? Yeah, so Anki is based in San Francisco. We're up on the 15th floor, I guess. Um, and it's a big open space. We're bringing together a lot of uh, AAA game development people, people from Guitar Hero and Bioshock. And so you mentioned Guitar Hero because I know that um, Dan Neal, who worked I think, on Guitar Hero and DJ Hero, over at Toys, Toys for Bob, there's a, there's a, seems to be a, a common flow of talent. Yeah, when you think about it, there's not too many brands that have married hardware and software like this. And, you know, Guitar Hero was one of the early big ones. Um, and so we re recently added a guy who was the lead designer um, at Harmonix on the Guitar Hero stuff. So we have a mix of that, people from game background, but um, a, a lot of people uh, that are from a, a real hardcore robotics science background. It's a really unusual mix. I've never seen anything quite like it. It's uh, when you walk across the studio, you know, you see a lot of people working at what you'd expect a computer workstation, but there's an awful lot of like vices and drills and wires and all <laughs> kinds really of bits strewn ab about, you know, as mad the mad inventors. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's a bit like a Geppetto's workshop, I guess yeah. is maybe the way I look at it. 
Yeah. And of course, like you'd expect, a lot of toys all over the place. <laughs> you know? One Skylanders of the in there? Work on, yeah, yeah. Skylanders has definitely been a, a big inspiration for the whole team. Um, the, the sort of the magic moment um, on Skylanders was when people put a toy on the portal and then it zaps into the game. And, uh, and we saw from very early on that that really felt like a very different kind of experience to any other game out there. And we see something very similar with Anki Drive, that moment when you put the car down on the track and before the game is really started and the car just takes off on its own and it's able to just stay on the track and kind of know where it's at on its own is a, it's a very powerful experience. Um, and you know, that, that only happens because of that sort of mix um, that we have of the robotics and game people working very closely together. Um, yeah, so it's a very, very creative environment. That sounds great. Well, really appreciate you taking some time to let us in on how things are developing and how the story's going so far. And look forward to checking in in New York, hopefully, at Toy Fair to see, see what you're going to unveil there. Very exciting. Many thanks. Thanks, Andy, so much. I'm looking forward to uh, meeting you in person. And, and uh, thank you so much for taking the time. It's been wonderful. Mm -hmm.